Hey guys, before we get started, I recently hit a milestone of 10k subscribers and I want to thank all of you for making this possible. I am truly grateful for all your support and feedback. To celebrate, I would like to do a giveaway for any one of my projects from my store, for free. All you have to do is to leave a comment down below with a creative tutorial idea. Hurry up and drop some awesome ideas for the next videos. Alright, let's get started. We've got this cool retro room with an old TV on the table and that's what we'll focus in on. Let's duplicate this clip two times by holding an option or alt key. Select two top clips, right click and create a new fusion clip. Go to fusion page. Here we have two clips displayed, media in one node and media in two node. Select media in one node. Choose Polygon tool or you can use a magic mask for the studio version. And let's mask out this TV screen. Increase soft edge just a tiny bit and enable inward checkbox. We don't see any results yet because two clips are enabled. If we disable media in one node, you can see masked out TV screen. Now we need to create a sliding screen that opens for our camera movement. And to do that, we need to copy and paste mask we already did for media in one node to media two node and disable inward checkbox. Now we need to animate sliding screen. We will use merge one node, which is connected to our first clip. Let's hover the playhead to eighth frame, select merge one node and add a keyframe on center. Step on the frame 50 and change X value so the screen completely disappears. Open spline editor to ease keyframes. Ok, that's done. Now we need to create a camera movement and add duplicated images inside of our old TV. Select merge to node and add an image plane 3D, merge 3D and render of 3D nodes. And make sure it is connected properly like so. Select Merge 3D node and add a camera 3D. Select camera 3D node and step on the frame number 0. Go to transform settings of our camera and change the value so we can see the entire image and add a keyframe. So this will be a starting point for our camera movement. Now let's create a TV clones. Select image plane 3D node, shift space and add a duplicate 3D node. Change copies to 8, step on the frame 50, go to translation settings and set Z offset to minus 0.1 and add a keyframe. Go to 85th frame and change the offset to minus 0.46. So our clones will move with the camera and that will create a nice parallax effect. Don't forget to use keyframes in spline editor. Let's see what we have at the moment. Ok, now we need to animate our camera. Select camera 3D node, step on the frame 100 and change the value so the camera will stop the movement after it completes the motion through all of our TV clones. Go to spline editor and ease the offset of the camera the way it starts the motion gradually, like so. Now let's create a cool rotation effect. Select duplicate 3D node, step on the 20th frame. Add a keyframe to rotation Z, go to frame 95 and set Z value to minus 10. Ease keyframes in spline editor. Now let's also add a camera rotation. Select camera 3D node, go to 20th frame, add a keyframe on Z rotation, step on the 95th frame and change the value to minus 71. Ease your keyframes in spline editor. Ok, let's see what we have. Cool, go back to fusion page and I want to add a drop shadow effect. Select media and one node, shift space and add drop shadow effect. Change values to your liking. Looking good. Now select render 3D node and add a zoom blur effect. We could just enable a motion blur in render 3D node, but it is too heavy for my Mac Studio while I record this video, so I'm gonna use a zoom blur instead. Let's animate zoom amount. Go to 25th frame, set amount to 0, hover playhead to 60th frame, set Z amount to 44, step on the frame 115 and set amount to 0. Ease keyframes in spline editor. Make a curve like this and go back to edit page to see the result.
Cool. Now we need to add an image in the end of our TV tunnel. Enable our bottom clip. This original clip has a camera zoom, but you can add your own zoom by keyframing zoom values in transform window. So I will add two markers to make it easy for me to visually see where the camera zoom is on the timeline. Now move this clip below our main fly through clip to match the camera movement in the end. Let's quickly add a zoom and a rotation animation to this clip to match the camera movement above. Ease keyframes using a new keyframe tab if you have Resolve 20.1. Right click, is in and out. And the same for the rotation. Looks nice, but we need to add a motion blur effect to the bottom clip to match the whole scene. Select top clip, go to fusion page, copy zoom blur node and paste it to our bottom clip in the fusion page as well. Open keyframe editor to shift the zoom blur animation so it matches the top clip. And that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below for the next creative tutorial idea and get a free project from my store. Thanks for watching.